So you might already have a revocable living trust and you've noticed that at the back of the trust, there's this list of your assets. They're all listed out and it's called a Schedule A or a Schedule of Assets. And you might be wondering, why do I have that list? Do I really need it? What's it for? In this video, we're gonna talk about the Schedule A, what it's useful for, and why you might not need one actually. So a Schedule A is really a list of assets that you intend to put in the trust. Okay, so it should include assets like your, your house, mutual funds, brokerage accounts, CDs, things that actually get retitled in the name of the trust. It would not include retirement accounts or life insurance, which you keep in your own name. Now, you notice that I said assets that you intend to have in the trust because writing something down on a Schedule A does not actually put that asset in the trust. To put something in the trust, you need to retitle the asset in the name of the trust. So for example, if I have a, an account in the name of Ellen Cookman, owner, I would have to retitle it or go to the bank and say, hey, I wanna change the ownership from Ellen Cookman to Ellen Cookman, trustee of the Cookman Family Trust, for example. That's how you put something in the trust. Then you would know from the monthly statements that you receive at the top left-hand corner, it would say Ellen Cookman, comma, trustee, or some, something that indicates that it's held in the name of the trust. Now the Schedule A is something that you can use if you forget to put something in the trust. So let's say I write down, you know, I have an account at San Mateo Credit Union, okay? And I write that account down on the Schedule A, but then for some reason, I take that account out of the trust. Well, and then I die. Well, what happens? How do we get it back into the trust? So if that account, let's say it's $200,000, so it's more than the minimum amount, which in 2023, is about $185,000, you know, that, that you can just get released to you through a 13100 affidavit. And you can see more about that in the video called, What If I Don't Fund My Trust? Let's say I have this asset that is not titled in, my, in the trust, it's just an Ellen Cookman, but it's on the Schedule A. Well, what happens then? So then my successor trustee would need to go to court and bring a petition called a Hegstead petition. This is based on probate code section 850. And the Hegstead petition says, well, you know, your honor, Ellen who died, she meant to put that asset into her trust, but she forgot or she took it out for some reason and she never put it back in. And we know she intended to put it in her trust because it's listed on the schedule A. So the Hegstead case actually involved a house that was taken out, I believe to refinance the house and the title company never put the house back into the trust. And let that be a caution for all of us, if you've refinanced your house, make sure that the title company does put the house back into the trust, but that's that's just an extra, all right? So in a state of Hengstead, the court said, well, as long as there's some evidence that they meant to put it in the trust, we will put it back in the trust for you and that house doesn't have to go through the whole probate court process, phew. Now, that was for a house. Then there was another case called Estate of Ukestead. I know, these weird names, right? And so in Estate of Ukestead, what happened was they had an asset that didn't get put in the trust. They didn't have a Schedule A or a list of assets, but they did have something called a general assignment. They had kind of a blanket statement, a one-page document that said, I want all of my stuff to go into my trust. And the court found that that's sufficient. You can just have that general assignment saying, I want everything to go into the trust, and that takes care of it. Isn't that wonderful? Hey everyone, if you liked my mom's video, like and subscribe. So do you need a Schedule A for you? All right, well, the answer is it depends. It depends which county you're in. All right, so I mostly practice in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties, although I, I really do help clients all over California. In San Mateo and Santa Clara counties, the courts will follow a state of Hegstead and a state of Ukestead. So they don't require a Schedule A. So what we usually do for our clients in these counties is we just put a, a nominal amount like $10. You might say, where is that $10? Well, I know some attorneys used to actually make a photocopy of a $10 bill and attach it to the back of the trust. We don't bother with that anymore, by the way, okay? But that's kind of the placeholder just to create the form of the trust before it's actually funded. So you'll know 
that if your trust says $10 or $100 on the Schedule A, that doesn't mean it's not funded. It just means that, that a court can rely on a general assignment that you prepare. And what I really like about not having to prepare a Schedule A is you have to update them. And people's assets change all the time, right? You know, you might decide to acquire some different stock options, or you might sell a house, move, buy a different house, buy a rental property. Each time you need to update your Schedule A, if you're relying on the Schedule A to be the backup, kind of the boots and suspenders of, you know, getting something into the trust if for some reason it's not titled in the trust. So I personally prefer a general assignment. If we're in a county, it allows for general assignments. Now, if you're in San Francisco or Alameda counties, then they don't like you to rely on the general assignment. They prefer a Schedule A. It's kind of like they never read a state of Ukestad. I don't understand it, but I follow their rules. And so if you do live in San Francisco County or Alameda County, then we will prepare a full Schedule A for you, listing the different assets that you have in your trust. Again, not retirement assets, not life insurance, but the different assets that should be titled in the trust. Now, please remember, and I think I, I already said this, but I want to emphasize it. You still need to retitle assets into your trust. Ideally, we don't want to have to go through a Hegstead petition in the first place. That costs a lot of money. Going through the court process takes a lot of time. And I just happen to be a lawyer who doesn't like the courts in the first place. And the reason why we set up a revocable trust is to not go through the courts, right? We want to avoid the courts. And for me, you know, at any cost, right? So please retitle your assets properly. We do have a video called Funding Your Trust. And you can watch that video and look at all the different types of assets you might have and how to make sure that they get into the trust. Then you might have a Schedule A that's filled out or you might have a general assignment that's kind of a catch-all that can help things get into the trust with a court petition when you're gone, if for some reason you haven't transferred something into the trust. So I hope that helps you to understand what that Schedule A is for and whether you might need it. Now, I do have a video that's called, What Should My Estate Plan Contain? And that talks about all the different aspects of an estate plan in addition to the Schedule A. And I encourage you to go watch it and I'll see you over there. Hello everyone. If you liked my mom's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you all next time.